Hello, my name is Cal Molinese from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And this is not another News from Underground episode. Actually, I'm going to go spread some anarchy right after this. I just wanted to share with you that later this evening, tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm hosting a show, a monthly series over at liberty.me called Fight the Matrix, in which I will be, I guess, sharing with you my experiences in fighting the state. I will be sharing you effective tactics, uh, effective uh, ways to introduce the argument against the state in which I find that uh, there exists nothing else in comparison in how to uh, push the ideas of anarcho-capitalism, of free market anarchy, of voluntarism, of agorism, of peaceful parenting right here in my own community, right? This is not something that has to live online. This is not something in which uh, you can only experience on Reddit, or you can only experience on Facebook. Uh, you can very much liberate your own community from that government tyranny. And so I will be starting off with a chapter that I'm working on on my new book. It's, uh, yeah, it's fine time I put a lot of these ideas together and uh, put forth so others can have uh, same access to, I guess, what, I guess my insights and in how to defeat the state, how to end the state in my lifetime, because that's essentially what all this is about. I want real freedom in my lifetime. I don't want to die a tax slave. And so I'm working on a book now. And so the title of this chapter will be called Know Thy Enemy, and I'll be putting pieces together from that for tonight's presentation. Uh, know Thy Enemy, the police extortionists, in which we're going to analyze the psychology, the training, and ways to best defend yourself, of course, from being kidnapped, extorted, uh, assaulted, or worse, murdered by these uh, blue costume psychopaths. And so that's what's going to go on tonight. So please join us, join the conversation, and I'll see you tonight. And with that, let's go spread some anarchy. You have no freedom of economic choice. You still have to give them your money. You still have to give up your property. You still have to pay your taxes. Because if you didn't have a freedom of economic choice of what to do with your own money, with your own property, government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes, right? So that's the hidden violence, that's the immorality of government, that this organization only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, versus though the plurality of non-violence solutions that us, us three here already share. So what are your thoughts on that? I think it sounds good. I actually, myself, I didn't vote. So. Nice, good great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, and, 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 uh, and how would you, I uh, guess, define freedom? Wow, <laughs> that's a big question. Um, what does that mean to you? Freedom itself? Yeah. Honestly, I don't know anymore. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I think government has done a good job in kind of moving that and taking that away over the number of years. Like the yeah. Patriot Act can spy on you at any time they want. The NDA can kidnap you at any time they want, right? If they arbitrarily label you as a terrorist. Uh, and so that's, so that's how government functions. It's an organization that uh, contradicts your moral principles and integrity to begin with, right? They, they attempt to try to compromise you and trick you into believing that this is the only way to solve problems when you in your life, you don't use violence. You don't, you don't uh, advocate for it. You don't uh, initiate it. Uh, you don't even, I guess, I guess I, in your day-to-day -day problems, I guess, find yourself that that's, I guess, a viable option, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so what government then is objectively uh, is that they have a monopoly on the services you and I want. Sorry, so when we're talking about government, we're not saying that uh, we don't want roads, we don't want security, we don't want any of that stuff. I do want that. But unfortunately, government has a monopoly on those services and which makes it illegal and criminal for you to unsubscribe or cancel, right? Not paying your taxes. And you, nor do you have the freedom to compete entrepreneurially against those monopolized services, right? In order to say, you know what, I could do a better job. That's not going to be harmful or abusive to you, the consumer. Yeah. Right? So I guess, uh, what are your thoughts, I guess, furthermore, I guess, what, uh, so in the absence of government, you will have a free market society, uh, where all, all the functions of government will be provided uh, by businesses, right? Com when you have competition, you have uh, cheaper products and increased quality of goods, right? Like a couple of years ago, uh, plasma screens, TVs cost like thousands of dollars. Today, you could buy a better version, thinner for a few hundred bucks. Right. Uh, whereas uh, when government has uh, their services, like in Detroit, the cost goes up. Right. Uh, like nobody ever says, you know, when I mean, people ask, me, what are your thoughts on the rise of uh, stamps? It's not like you have a choice. It's not like there's anywhere else you can <laughs> yeah. go. Right. Uh, and so, you know how uh, the post office solved the problems of long wait lines? They just they, they remove the clocks. Oh. So you can't see the time. Rude. Rubik's yeah. Cube. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, they pass out Rubik's Cube for a friend. Rubik's Cube? Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's, so that's uh, exactly what government is. Uh, in the absence of government, you have a free market society. Or it could be called anarchy. Uh, like in science, anions and cations. An means without. Archy means rulers, like a politician. Without political rules. Not without rules, we can have rules. But like the government rules on uh, cannabis, you didn't give consent to it, right? 
Yeah. Uh, you, you, you didn't sign a contract. I mean, there kind of exists to resolve disputes, but it's not a service in which you say, you know what, you do a good job. I've seen your credit ratings history. Uh, I read your customer reviews. Uh, you've been in the business for 10 years, five stars out of five stars. They can't go bankrupt, right? They have no, they have immunity from, from the decisions. Like, look, if there was a business, I would imagine if you would want the freedom to kind of cancel and subscribe, or you felt that they were being abusive, right? Yes. And so, unfortunately, you can't do that with government services, yeah. right? So, I guess, uh, are there anything, I guess, you found yourself, I guess, uh, displeased with or uh, finds, I guess, in a place of affordment with uh, any government uh, services or uh, any government related, I guess, affecting you or your friends? Um, I feel like our system of voting is old. Yeah. Because <laughs> your vote might not necessarily count. That's very true. That's very true. And that's part of the reason I can vote for <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, it's a whole charade. It's a whole. Uh, it's, it's not as if uh, e even if it didn't count, uh, even participating, uh, you you would be forcing your opinions onto other people. Just like people have forced their opinions that cannabis is bad for you, the majority over the minority. Right? It's more rule then. Right? The majority, the tyranny of the majority. Right? So without uh, a monopoly on these communities, you would have thousands of communities catering to your lifestyle and preferences. Right? You can have an apartment complex then that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. <laughs> right? Yeah, so you wouldn't have to like the people who are against cannabis, uh, then great, here, here's an apartment, here's a community that hates it as well, right? Don't force their preferences that it's against it, against other people, right? What's your alternative to government? Uh, I'll get to you in one second. Uh, so, in other, in other words, this principle can also be called the non-aggression principle, right? Like we were talking about earlier that we don't use violence to solve our problems, so you can kind of universalize that principle, right? So it doesn't matter what title you have or what color costume you wear, right? It's wrong and immoral to initiate that force uh, all over the world. You know, no matter who you are or what position you fulfill, right? Uh, so I guess we have some pamphlets if you like. Would it's you be interested? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. And my brother is like super into all this stuff, so I'm gonna share this with him. Yeah. Absolutely. Well. Oh, great. Great. Thank you so much for uh, Thank coming you. out. Yeah. Absolutely. I like Listen the patches. Yes. Yeah, right. Well. Yes. Yeah, well. Hey, how you doing? Good, and yourself? I love the Fountainhead, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, then you'll be very familiar with many of this. Uh, yeah, so what's your alternative to government? May I'm I talking in a realistic sense, not in the idealistic sense that Rand used. Yeah, this is the realistic sense. I'm not, okay. I'm not, I'm not a Randian. Okay. Uh, so, uh, could we start off with the uh, the question? Sure, it's, it's I don't have much time. preliminary. Right, so you don't have much time? Yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, I guess it's an anthropological side. Can you scan right here? Sure. Okay, cool. Uh, a little closer. Perfect. All right. First question. In your day-to-day -day life, so I'm pretty much going to ask you three simple questions and how government is immoral. Describe uh, the system, how government, I guess, uh, fulfills that function, and then ask what your thoughts and comments are there. And then I'll answer what is the alternative, right? Okay. All right. First question. In your day-to-day -day life, do you use violence to solve your personal problems? No. Second question. With the exception of self-defense, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? Depends on the circumstances. Uh, exception of self-defense of yourself and others. Would you consider it wrong to initiate that force? Violence being defined as placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent or choice. I rape, murder, theft, and assault. Yes. All right. And third question would be, would you also consider it wrong and immoral to violently force I understand ideas? what you're getting at. You're basically saying that because I personally believe that these things to be immoral, that the government, by extension, yeah. should not be able to do these things. Well, not so much should. Uh, and I'll get to there in a second. Uh, so you just told me then your day-to-day -day life, you have a plurality and non-violent solutions so you apply and use to solve your personal problems. You have this yes. more integrity. Therefore, the government should try and use other solutions. No. No? No. Uh, yeah, trying to step ahead. You've never heard this one before, so okay. this is something totally new. Uh, so you have this, I guess, more integrity against that violence. And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, we're taught, though, the only way we can affect any kind of change or any kind of difference, though, is the government, the politics. They tell us to vote. So people vote with their ideas, opinions, and preferences, and how best to solve the community problem. And in effect, they elect a politician. That politician, his early job is to legislate those ideas and opinions into law. Those laws of opinions are then backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint. You could take uh, cannabis, uh, like the opinion on cannabis, government opinion that cannabis is bad for everyone. If I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidding. That's kidnapped. not the opinion of the government. The legislators, the they whole function. They have a law, not an opinion. Yeah, the legislators legislate those opinions that are back and forth by the police, and those are the functions of government. It's not always necessarily an opinion on how healthy it is. It's an opinion on its effect on like socio It's an opinion context. that's being backed and forced by a gun. Can you agree with that? No. No, you can't. So if I were to smoke a plant right now, I would not be threatened with violence or being thrown into a cage? No, you misinterpreted what I'm saying. I'm not disagreeing with the opinion itself. I'm disagreeing with your interpretation of it. What, of the what, fact government, what define opinion. government then? Hmm? Government? It's essentially a way to keep a sense of I don't want to essentially. Give me a definition. A definition? 
A, gov a government is a bureaucratic or legislative body that manages that manages everyday that makes life. Policy. That makes policy. Thank you. That makes policy. And how do those policies enforced? Mm -hmm. Through force, generally. Through force, through gunpoint. All right, so it's an organization of violence that only knows how to solve problems through violence. All right, and that's the point trying to get at here. All right, so this organization, right, so if government policy on cannabis, if I were to smoke a plant, I will be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison, in which any point I refuse or resist because I don't agree with that opinion and try to run away, I'd be met with more violence or something. You're sensational. Murder. No, this is a fact. Try to smoke a plant here and try to resist. Try to walk away when a cop says don't. What happens to you? Why do you pull over on the side of the road when you see flashing lights behind you? Threat of force. Threat of force, right. There's a threat of being murdered or kidnapped if you do not obey, if you do not submit. That's a fact. Again, you're sensationalizing That's fact. it. This is a fact. Well, I'm sorry that you, you feel that uh, this is maybe not something you feel like you, that happens to you often, but there's two million people suffering in rape cages. That's also a fact because of a lot of these opinions a lot. Many what of them do you define as a crime. rape case? Rape case, well, I could show you statistics. If you like, I mean, you're I don't want statistics. Statistics I want a will show you. Term. Yeah, tech, well, rape case will be being thrown into an, uh, a cage in which uh, anything can happen. And a lot of uh, you mean out, a prison? Outcries, uh, are you going to use the word it's prison? It's a cage. It's a cage. The you word, may call it a prison. The word prison, the prison is, is a the cage. technical term. No, it's an abstract term to kind of fancy it up. A penitentiary sounds a nice, better term than a cage to lock up a human being, right? Okay. Don't present your argument. No, 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 in a no, it's not present. No, no, I'm, I'm trying to be objective about this. You want to be abstract and about it. You want to color and sugarcoat it. Well, I don't like the name cage. I prefer penitentiary. I prefer prison. Does it? It's a cage. There's bars behind it. How would you describe a prison? A cage, a wall in which you cannot escape, no freedom of movement to go where you want to. Yeah. I'm What's not, the difference between a cage and that? I'm not going to be used to con like convey I'm not, I'm not, to No, a no, no, no. There's, there's nothing to be cured. Yeah. Take good care. I was just wondering, so what form of deterrence would um, a gov- Well, if there were no government, what form of deterrence would, I guess, push people away or prevent them from committing such acts as robbery, thievery, you know, kidnapping, and what have you? Because if there's no government, then there would be nothing to say that such said acts or crimes would be illegal. Right. All right, so I guess first you want to examine how things function today, right? So the Supreme Court has ruled many times, several times, numerous times, that the police have no obligation to protect you. Mm -hmm. No obligation, no constitutional duty to, pr to protect your life or your property. Mm -hmm. So you really live in a state in which uh, that's absent. Mm -hmm. So in a free market society, you would have actual businesses that would say, you know what, we will protect your property, we will protect your life. This is like gated community. So instead of Virginia being one monopolized community, the majority opinion over the minority, uh, like in Camden, for example, you'll have thousands of competing communities that would cater to the lifestyle and preferences of, of, of the millions of individuals in this in this country. Uh, so you'll have thousands of different uh, polycentric legal systems, different uh, uh, judges, judges that uh, will stand up when you come into the room, right? Because you're paying their salary, right? Uh, judges that you can say, you know what? I, I don't like your service. I don't, do, I don't think you do a good job. I'm going to go seek another judge. I'm going to seek a better dispute resolution organization. Uh, your credit card company has this, for example. eBay has this. Uh, Etsy has a uh, dispute resolution. All it is is this, uh, a judge, it's a person who gives an opinion on how best to provide a fair and impartial decision, right, on, on disputes, right? So in a free market society, you have real respect for private property, whereas here there's not, right? The government needs to steal your property under the name of taxes in order to protect your property, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll have uh, a lot of competition to provide these services, uh, whereas it doesn't exist here today. Uh, another one would be uh, social ostracism, right? Uh, you know, the, the risk of being socially ostracized uh, outweighs uh, the, the cost of uh, wanting to do that violence because you'll find that it's not cost beneficial. You'll find that when, you, when government is removed, nearly half your income is returned, right? And nearly half your income is no longer being stolen. You have a lot more economic freedom uh, to, to thrive, to be successful. You don't have a lot of government restrictions on what you can and cannot do with your body or with your property, right? Uh, regulations, as they call it. So you have a great opportunity to, to excel and succeed and find that it's more, you, you, the cost is like, it's a lot more valuable, a lot more um, enriching. Uh, I, I could find more wealth here. Instead of trying to steal, I could create wealth and make and, and turn that into a profitable business, right? Whereas like uh, today, you have a lot of crime because of uh, the war on drugs. Mm -hmm. Government created that, right? So it artificially inflates the drug of prices and it leads a lot of gang escalation of violence. So without government, no war on drugs, the price of the drugs goes back down, and there's really no incentive to, to get involved in the trade anymore. Understandable. Okay, so how would you establish the, I guess, the non-structural way of not having a government? Like how, so are you saying a revolution should take place, an insurrection in which, you know, we'd all go to the White House and, you know, <laughs> 
I don't know, steal their windows and chairs. Right. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Okay. I mean, that only teaches people that uh, doesn't really teach people anything. That uh, yelling at buildings is not going to change anything, right? Breaking windows is not going to change anything. Having more integrity in my life, I don't use violence to solve my problems. Uh, let's start with that, with that foundation, right? The government only knows how to solve problems through violence. So let's, uh, you know, remove ourselves and socially ostracize government, and let's turn to our community and create a community of individual people who have respect for private property, have a respect for each other as equals, have a respect for for the non-aggression principle. That we find it wrong and immoral to initiate that force mm -hmm. no matter your title or what color costume you wear right uh, so many people start from the ground up right so uh, no uh, begging politicians strangers you've never met for freedoms that were yours to begin with at birth right you were born free uh, so we you know, there, you know what there's no business for strangers called politicians then uh, to tell you what you can and cannot do with your body or your property mm -hmm. right so we should not because begging for them to be free acknowledges that there are slave masters Right, acknowledges that they have dominion over us, right, and they have none. All right. Um, the reason that my initial question, as far as uh, if there are Christians involved, oh, I asked you if you are an atheist because, um, well, I'm not saying now we've kind of um, leaned toward, uh, leaned away from our the initial ide ideology of government, which was that it was founded upon Christian statutes and beliefs and, you know, behaviors and whatnot. So now that that's happened and that we obviously strayed away from that, you know, idea to begin with. Um, I want to say so. Okay. But I like your point that you mentioned, like, it, it, what's funny, I guess, a lot of with uh, borrowing a lot of Christian examples, like the Ten Commandments, you have ten Bill of Rights, right? Uh, the Constitution is the new Bible. Uh, however, you want to examine what is the Constitution, the formation of this government, they want to purport as a contract, right? Mm -hmm. That was signed by like over 30 people. However, wouldn't you find it wrong and immoral for someone to sign your name on a document you didn't give consent to, right? If you did not give them power of attorney, right? So that contract then only really abides to those like, 37 people who signed it. You can't force the unborn to be part of a contract. It's like forcing you to be part of 18T before you were born. Right, so you have no freedom to choose sprints, no freedom to create your own company, to provide your own contracts. You're forced under this contract, mm -hmm. right? So that's, you will find that to be invalid, right? If, if you never gave, you know, you never signed away contracts for like Netflix or any other thing. But the government wants to force this contract until they're born, like Social Security. Mm -hmm. They force you, when you were born, uh, to, for, to, to pay for it. You're, you're like, uh, they're using you as cattle, they're using you as, uh, um, as collateral. Right, to pay for, for a system, uh, social security, mm -hmm. that you'll never have when it's time for you to retire, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so you have to kind of look at that, I guess, more objectively, right? It's not a real contract, right? If it was a real contract, you, you'll have your signature on it, right? You will show me factual evidence that you do have a contract with government, but you don't. It doesn't exist. And would you say a person who has the trait or characteristic of humility is less likely to agree with you as far as, um, I guess, submitting to a, you know, uh, kind of a, an outline or a, a set of rules being put forth to keep everything in order and in place? I think, uh, I mean, humility and egoism and, uh, I, you know, keep a balance between the two, you know, uh, if, if you're proud of something of your own work, be, be proud, you know, mm. uh, if, uh, don't be too proud though, right, balance your virtues and your vices, uh, but in terms of, I guess these particular rules, I think this is something that most people would like to agree to because most people like cannabis and people would like to have the freedom to smoke a plant, right? And there's some people who don't. Well, without a government, you have thousands of communities that cater to those lifestyle and preferences. You can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly with those rules that you give consent to, like you give consent to like no cats but dogs are allowed, right? And here's the consequences. Real t explicit consent with a contract, you can have an apartment that's right next door that says no cannabis allowed. Okay. Right? So you can have competing preferences. Under government though, it's the majority preference onto the minority. Uh, I'm back in an hour. All right, man, good seeing you. So you'll, have, so you'll have real explicit consent to the laws, to the rules you agree to. Whereas under government, you don't have that. Okay. All right, you can't show me uh, that a consent. Mm. Yeah. All right, I have class. I'm sorry. It was yeah, yeah, really well, no, absolutely. I'm Cal by the way. Oh, Martin, no, it's nice to meet you. Yes, well, would you like some pamphlets? Uh, I'm I'm like I'm like in a rush. I'll be back though. It'll, my class ends at 2 o'clock. I'm not right, saying, yeah, 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 I'm yeah, not cool, saying cool, you're yeah, unintelligent. Yeah, yeah. You're obviously well educated. The fact that you brought no, it I love here, your right? questions. Yeah, you yeah. I've pondered on this uh, quite some time. Or, yeah. No, that's cool. That's awesome. Uh, all right, cool. I'll, I'll wait for you then. I like people that make me think so. Appreciate it. Have a great day. So that's what you will find then an absence of government 
segment of free market society providing those services. The voluntary, explicit contracts, right? Uh, so you wouldn't, so instead of one monopoly community in which the majority rules over the minority in, in terms of the preference, you have thousands of competing communities. So you can have mm -hmm. one that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. Right. Those rules and preferences will be in the contract, right? No cats allowed, dogs are okay. Cannabis friendly, not cannabis friendly here. Right. Alcohol prohibition here in this community, well, fuck it, I'm going to go drinking and I want to have a yeah, time yeah, sharing yeah. this one. Yeah, I, I can, I can see, I can see your point, but you've also got to ask, like, what's the practical ramification of that? You know, there has to be some sort of overlying order, and what exactly that is, I think, has to be determined by the people. Right. But there's also, there also has to be a give and take. You know, if if you've got something that's completely uh, government-less, if there's not the biggest guy in the room saying, okay, okay, I'm going to do this thing, you have to listen to me, then you've got multiple, multiple factions that uh, would result in, I think, violence. And I think we're seeing that, especially in third world countries where there isn't a strongly established warlord or government or, you know, whatever. It is a warlord. That's, that's yeah. the correct terminology. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I, and I actually agree with you on that. The question is, Kind of how much how much say do the people have in what the warlord slash government is doing? Right. Uh, so under government, though, you can't cancel and subscribe from the warlord protection. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so right? sorry. Are no, you you're okay? fine. You're fine. Yeah. So, I totally just coughed. So you, you have no no legal ramification. They have uh -huh. immunity from it. You can't cancel and subscribe. You can't compete. And a free market service is providing this. It's a click of a button. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't like what you're doing, your service, it seems like you're negating the contract, right. uh, I'm going to sue you in court. Nobody has to uphold their contract, that's very true. Mm -hmm. But if the moment you don't do, I think everyone wants to know that, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I don't know if I want to do contract business with you as well, you seem mm -hmm. too risky of a person. So it would behoove people beneficially, cost beneficial analysis that, mm -hmm. to abide by my word, to, to keep my promise right, to yeah. abide by my contract, lest yeah. I be socially ostracized. Yeah. Uh, you could find uh, this being uh, social ostracism being a, a very uh, substantial loss to many businesses to go against cultural norms. Like Russ Limbaugh saying a sexist remark lost so many sponsorships and millions of dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways to kind of punish bad businesses right. uh, to the brink of uh, bankruptcy. Right. Uh, whereas you, you don't have that with government. Mm -hmm. uh, what inevitable you will find with government though, because they have a monopoly in these unfunded liabilities, like being forced to pay for social security when you were born, right. you use as collateral, but you'll never see any of that to begin with. Mm -hmm. You'll find it to look like Detroit's yeah. unfunded liabilities. USPS, $16 billion in debt. Whenever you have a government monopoly, the cost goes up like the rise in stamps, the quality yeah. depreciates, like they remove clocks inside their, their post office to solve the right. problem of long wait lines. Yeah. Right? <laughs> because they're not a business. They can't make decisions. Yeah, they they can't, uh, they're not as effective or efficient to uh, allocate yeah. resources. Consider yeah. the fact uh, that I agree. Right? <laughs> First, so, so it's safe to say the <laughs> one agency <laughs> wants to say, well, fuck it, we're going to go and try to take over all of these different communities. Well, then, uh, and that's a concern I would have too. So I will have like my security company, or if I were creating a security company, I'll have contracts with those security companies. Hey, in the event that this guy, you know, starts bugging me or starts initiating, of course, uh, would you aid, aid me, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll have contracts with thousands of others because they would also want the same security, Basically, right? right? Uh, in the prevention of that. And you'll yeah, unless unless there are large factions, and then you're looking at Europe pre World War One. Right. So you're looking even in Europe though historically. Uh, whenever like uh, France is like total uh, running across Europe to conquer all these uh, lands, a lot of the states gather together, ally to defeat them, and everything goes back to the natural borders. And there's a long history in Europe of things going that way uh, until World War One, when the United States finally entered it, and things went disastrously like World War Two. Uh, so you can find historical examples of uh, a lot of smaller communities allying against the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. Right? So that would, uh, and at the same time, even if uh, one person wanted to take their private company into warlord mode, I mean, for, for a moment you have to think about it. It's like, look, I'm making a, obviously I'm a big company and that's because I'm profitable, because I'm providing a service people want. Uh, it's like, I don't know if my board members would want to say, uh, would kind of agree with me, we're going warlord. It's like, look, we want to keep money, that's beneficial. It's very costly to do violence. We have to get insurance rates for our people. It's like, the cost beneficial, just keep doing what we're doing. And uh, instead of going to do other directions. Unless you have an incredibly uh, we're gonna step into charismatic, charismatic CEO <laughs> who can get his board onto the idea okay. of you know, eliminating the race and of Jews. Then right, right. Okay, so say you have that, for example. Uh, and, and people, that information, their competing businesses will be vying for that, waiting for you to screw up. Uh -huh. And the moment you do, they're like, look what he's doing over here. Here's the evidence, here's the what we have. Uh -huh. You know, they're, they're increasing their armaments and everyone massive, like cancel, unsubscribe. So they go bankrupt.
totally made up. Because there's no taxes, right? Yeah. Uh, everything's voluntary, everything's consensual, real contracts, cancel, unsubscribe, done. It's like their, their stock will plummet. <laughs> <laughs> stock plummet. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. That's really interesting. I really appreciate you um, You're gonna have being out here and talking to me about it. Yeah, so that, that's for sure we advocate for a free market society. Yeah. Uh, I have pamphlets to the like. We're part of a non political Yeah. We're part of a non-political organization uh, trying to turn away from government altogether uh, and create a community founded on these values of non-violence.